Who are you and what do you do? Well, my name is Gerald Patrick Riley. I was given that name by my mother and my father. And I am a man of many different kinds of trades. I'm 72 years old and I've done a lot of different things in life. So when you ask me who I am, I guess I'm my ego and my consciousness of the mind and my body and my inner self all intertwined into one big ball, and that's me. Um, and I do art. Oh, okay. Okay? What's your background? Well, you know, I come from a small town in Oklahoma called Ada, where I was always interested in uh, arts. I was very active in the arts when I was in grade school and high school and junior high. And so uh, my background is an arts education background. And I've been doing that my whole life. I'm an arts educator and artist. What role does the artist have in society? Now that's just a major question. Exactly. <laughs> you can go from Ronald Reagan, who was the president, to some wino on the street who claims to be an artist. There's just lots of variation in the roles an artist plays. Um, how have you, how has your practice changed over time? Well, when I was younger, I didn't know a whole lot about what my style was. And I had a variety of art techniques I used. Like, a, I started out in the practical arts. I was a sign painter when I was in high school. And, uh, I graduated then into college, and I became an academician doing academic drawing. And, uh, I studied silversmithing. I've studied most of the arts, and uh, I've crisscrossed into drama and to some into music. So I've had a lot of variations of uh, changes in my life. So whenever you did that uh, sign painting. Did you uh, project or did you actually just hand draw it? I, I'm a hand sign painter. I know how to do it. I'm That's a, hard. That is very hard. Art. It's an old art that is dead now, but I know how to do it. What art do you most identify with? Well, basically the one I most identify with is the mask art, the art of mask making, and the art of sculpture. So those two are the two that uh, Oklahoma culture knows me for doing, but I also paint. And I draw a whole lot. Um, what's your strongest memory of childhood related to art? Oh, years ago when I was in kindergarten, I drew a picture and my art teacher loved it, so he put it up on the wall, and I have been having a great time about that memory ever since. <laughs> um, describe a real-life situation that has inspired you. Oh, my. Well... I guess in uh, 1974, I met a uh, East Indian uh, Swami who was a uh, meditation master, and I became awestruck with him, and so I lived with him for some time, and uh, he taught me meditation techniques, and he's inspired me ever since. Wow, pretty cool. Um, what's your most embarrassing moment related to art? Well, I'm also a ventriloquist. I was raised as a ventriloquist. My father was a magician. And one time when I was about 12 years old, I was doing a ventriloquist act with my puppet, and a string broke during the routine. And so I was embarrassed, but I went ahead and finished the show. <laughs> but it was like <clears throat> I had to turn my puppet's face all the way around because the mouth wouldn't move. So, so to kill the act, so I was pretty embarrassed by that. That's pretty cool. Um, what jobs have you done other than being an artist? Well, as, a, as an art teacher, a lot of times I like to go, and as an artist, I like to change my role and do other jobs because it keeps me fresh when I come back to do art. I like to know what the world is doing. So uh, other jobs I had, I was raised uh, as a childhood magician. And I did magic shows around South Central Oklahoma and Oklahoma City area. And when I wasn't doing that, I worked in a grocery store. So I became a 
knowledgeable about the grocery business. And then I worked with, uh, I was the assistant advertising manager for Safeway Stores Incorporated, a grocery chain. And then I went into teaching, and in the uh, summer, sometimes I would work as a construction designer. And I designed and built kitchens and uh, different kinds of things like that in construction. And one time I just got tired of everything and took a job in the oil field for a couple of years. And uh, in the summers I worked as a hot shot in the oil field. What's a hot shot? That's where you're out digging ditches and getting oh. in the mud. And oh. The like. <laughs> and then I, uh, I guess I worked, uh, that's probably, constru- I built a couple houses during the summertime. So I like construction. I like things where I use my hands a lot. Um, what do you dislike most about the art world, if anything? Oh, if I dislike the most about it is the fact that many times people in the arts are not in a decision-making role for what the arts are about. And so uh, a lot of times you have to react to decision-making that is really contrary to what a positive art program is about. Yeah. Um. What type of research have you done to prep for teaching a class? Well, I have a master's in art education from Oklahoma University, and I've researched a lot of material. I was also the art curriculum director for Oklahoma City Public Schools, and I've spent a lot of time researching about the benefits of arts education to human beings. And uh, I've found a lot of great things that relate arts education to neuroscience and to health and welfare of the human brain. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Xavier from X Men. <laughs> oh, I think I'd like to. Uh, I think I'd like to understand the powers of Francis of Assisi. Okay. <laughs> uh, who's that? Our Mother Teresa. Ah, okay. That'd be kind of like cool. To know their powers. <laughs> uh, name something you love and why. Okay. Name something I love. Yep. Oh, gosh, I love my family, I love my wife, I love my children and my grandchildren. And, you know, I just generally love humanity. It's just something I like to do. I like to generate love as much as possible. What is your dream project, if you could do anything? Uh, if I'd do anything, I think I would be building about a, a huge sculpture in Oklahoma City to represent Oklahoma. That would be my dream, dream sculpture to do. I like it would be big. What would it be? Like a big giant yeah, horse or something? A huge bird image oh. of Phoenix. Oh. Cast cool. in bronze, probably, with steel and brass combined with uh, Oklahoma rock. I've designed it. I oh. sort of would love to do it. That's pretty cool. Um, name three artists that have inspired you. Oh, my. Or, or would you like to be compared to? Well, actually, three people that have inspired me a lot. Uh, one of my professors was Eugene Babinger at Oklahoma University, and he was a great inspiration to me. And then another artist was an artist nobody knows a whole lot about who was named Larry Van Heron. He inspired me a whole lot. And another Oklahoma artist who's very popular that inspired me was the Reverend John Walsh, who was, was a painter. Uh, professionally, what's your goal? Professionally, my goal right now is to uh, keep creating art as uh, long as I'm able to walk and uh, to enjoy art camps and just have a very pleasing, healthy life as much as I can. What wouldn't you do without? What wouldn't I do without? Oh, gosh. Suffering. Suffering. (laughs) That works. If you could... Oh, if you could have, or sorry, if you could change the world, what would you change it and how? I would uh, recommend what uh, Carl Sagan was talking about, that if you look at the blue planet, it's a little blue spot in the solar system. And if you look at that consciousness that way, it seems stupid to have wars and to hate each other and stuff. Because we're just this little spot in the universe. I just look at people and think they're sort of stupid because we fight each other and do things that are out of context with what we are. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay.